Hello, everyone. Healthcare continues to make strides in innovation. However, most of these innovations are still very expensive. So billions in India are one critical and chronic illness away from poverty. Even those who get covered deal with many long-term hidden costs, direct and indirect. And persons with kidney disease also fall into this category of you know, struggling with direct and indirect costs. Today, we will delve into this topic a little bit uh, to understand what kidney patients deal with and what are the optimal uh, you know, uh, treatments required for them to have better quality of life and where the big gaps are. Uh, so uh, as part of this topic, we've, you know, Patients Engage and Kidney Warriors Foundation uh, will talk about how to advocate for financial access for persons with kidney disease, along with some of our key panelists. Uh, our panelists today are Dr. Sanjeev Gulati, very senior nephrologist, president of Indian Society of Nephrologists, uh, Vasundra Raghavan, CEO of Kidney Warriors Foundation, a pan-India organization of kidney patients, both CKD, uh, chronic kidney disease, as well as uh, kidney transplants. Um, we have Sirisha, a public health professional consultant, uh, a Ford Foundation fellow from India, and over two decades of public health experience uh, working in health financing innovations and health tech innovations. And I'm Aparna Mittal. I'm the CEO of Patients Engage, a platform that focuses on informing and empowering patients of chronic diseases for better health outcomes. Um, and I'm the moderator for this session. So let us get started uh, because we have a lot to cover. Uh, let me stop for now. Dr. Uh, Gulati, if we can start with you, what does optimal treatment of a person with CKD typically include? Okay, so first of all, uh, just for the uninitiated, uh, how do we define chronic kidney disease? How common is it? I'll start off with that. Sure. So chronic kidney disease is... Uh, an irreversible worsening of kidney function, which is documented over a period of three months. So all kidney function may not be irreversible. There are some that we call acute kidney injury, which is treatable. But if over a period of two months, we see that the kidney function is not improving, it is suboptimal, then we call it chronic kidney disease. How common is it? I think this is, it's becoming commoner. Um, the initial studies, including ours, uh, when I was in SGPGI, we found very low incidences. We did a study, we found that if you look at all patients coming to hospital, about 5% had chronic kidney disease. Hmm. That was a hospital-based thing. Community estimates were close to 10%. This was uh, in the 90s. Uh, currently, there is an ongoing study by the Indian Society of Nephrology in collaboration uh, with the pharma company. And uh, this is a national survey. We are targeting close to 2 lakh individuals all over the country, uh, not only that, entire two, entire three cities, we have preliminary information of the first 1.5 lakhs, and we have involved about 1,400 general physicians. We have trained them to, you know, in the first stage, how to uh, evaluate or diagnose chronic kidney disease, and then look at this. So then the second part was the implementation. So our initial figures are actually startling, and uh, the first 1.5 lakh uh, patient data shows that the prevalence of chronic kidney disease is now 30%. Wow. So if you are, let's say, what does it 30% mean? So if, if, you, if I'm staying, like, let's say in Delhi, in, around my area, if I collect 100 people, 30 of them have got some degree of chronic kidney disease. So that is, I think, people need to be aware of it. When I started training in chronic kidney disease, you know, we always thought it's a very rare disease, somebody else's problem. I won't mind. I and we okay. You know, to be fair, we did see these patients very occasionally. But if now, uh, because of you know various issues, and we know that uh, the two commonest causes of chronic kidney disease are high blood pressure and diabetes. In the other order, diabetes and high blood pressure. And India also becoming you know now uh, by two thousand twenty four, we are going to become the diabetic capital of the world, and the rising prevalence of hypertension. These two factors are the reason why the incidence of chronic kidney disease has increased to one and a half times. So that is for everyone to understand that it's a fairly common disease. Uh, in terms of the burden on the society and um, uh, you know on healthcare system, 
it is uh, chronic kidney disease you know has lot of comorbidities hmm. it affects the heart uh, it affects the brain uh, so people have lot hmm. of other issues and that's why the it is projected that by 2024 it's going to be the fifth leading cause of mortality and also because of the lot of comorbidities it it has there are frequent hospitalizations and the expenditure increases correct so now coming to what is the optimal treatment of chronic kidney disease so it depends chronic kidney disease is divided into five stages uh, based on the percentage of kidney function we also look at protein levels so stage 1 is kidney function more than 90% stage 2 is kidney function 60 to 90% stage 3 is 30 to 60% divided into 2a and b and stage 4 is 15 to 30% and stage 5 is 15% or less now the treatment always also depends obviously on what is treatment as well as the need for follow up and investigation depends on the stage of chronic kidney disease so let's say people who have got stage 1 or stage 2 chronic kidney disease so we are happy seeing them the guideline suggests that even if you see these people once in 3 to 6 months <laughs> it is more than enough right the moment you move on to stage 3 chronic kidney disease you know, things start getting difficult because also there are lot of other issues i would say uh, you have to individualize but once in every 2 months stage 4 definitely once a month and stage 5 literally uh, every 1 to 2 weeks or every week and stage 5 is the uh, you know time that we start uh, stage 4 is the time that we start advocating um, um, treatment options um in terms of uh, dialysis and kidney transplant right uh, chronic kidney disease uh, is a progressive disease i think this is one thing that everyone needs to understand uh, people talk that they come to us saying that oh my kidney function is not improved i, I tell them all we can do as of current date the treatment options available are slowing the progression of kidney disease and there definitely over the last decade there has been tremendous advancement oh. uh, we have newer agents coming in uh, so we can you know uh, slow down the progression but with this any new drug you know you do understand comes at a cost mm. so that's why the costs of treatment of early stages of chronic kidney disease have increased and outcomes have also increased let me say that yes um, if i look back at my practice you know when i started my career in nephrology um the cost of treatment because we hardly had any agent available we just had the as inhibitors the ramipril or enalapril and they used to cost a few you know months treatment was a few hundred rupees but today i mean especially over the last uh, few years we there have been tremendous advancement so besides these as inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers we have the newer drugs called sclt2 inhibitors mm. uh, these are drugs uh, we started Uh, by using in diabetic patients but their use has been extended to non diabetic patients um and then we have also phenylalanine which is a newer agent these all these tend to reduce protein leakage in the urine uh, so typically a prescription of a, a ckd patient you know average we end up writing about 5 to 7 drugs hmm. and that is where you know the costs of treating chronic kidney disease are increasing partly i think another reason is that if you look into the the we had again the isn registry data is there people are still coming to us much At late stage earlier study showed they are coming to stage 4 and stage 5 now perhaps stage 3 stage 4 very very few people are coming in stage 1 stage 2 and that actually obviously adds to the cost of uh, treatment right. uh, i'll share with you a survey that we did at uh, uh, Fortis Hospital soon after I joined. So what we did was we got out the records of uh, the preventive health checkups. So these people had already come and gone back. And why they were doing preventive health checkup? Predominantly because their employer either mandated it or they had a complimentary, you know, health evaluation. So seven hundred seventy-four patients over a period of six months were records were screened, and what we found was. that 9.7% of these patients when we went through their records actually had chronic kidney disease so they had come back come they done a free uh, some blood test and gone back 
not even consulted a nephrologist, despite being in contact with the healthcare system. Right. And to be fair enough, our system is also not that you know um, efficient that you send an alert to right. the patient that look. So this was a time when we were doing the serum creatinine, and at that point of time, once we got this data, I was able to impress upon the um, our laboratory colleagues that look, you know, just doing a serum creatinine in my doing a calculation is you know it's it's very cumbersome and it's not enough for the patient. So that's the time we moved on to an automated EGFR. So there is a number that the patient gets and that obviously I see the, when they come in now and they say, what is this number? And I said, to tell them, look, this number says 27. So I they ask, what does 27 mean? I tell them 27 means you've got 27% kidney function. So you are in stage four chronic kidney disease. And right. their, their response is, I'm absolutely healthy. So this is a patient who's not on any medication. Right. Coming for, to me for the first time. So even now, I think a lot of awareness needs to be created for chronic kidney disease. But yes, because uh, newer treatments are available, um, the cost of even um, a stage 1 to stage 4 chronic kidney disease is high. Stage 5, we all, already know that dialysis is fairly expensive. Transplant is there. Transplant costs a lot. Uh, Post-transplant, there is lifelong immunosuppression, which adds to the cost. So that's right. why this is in, in a nutshell, as I, as I can put it. Where right. is, right. you know, I'm really happy to take no, I, I think that you you covered it very well. Uh, I guess what I'd also like to add, as you said, that there are also other comorbidities that the patient is going through. So if it's, you know, if they've reached end stage kidney disease due to diabetes, they also have a lot of the other diabetic complications and therefore they have additional doctor visits that they're doing and additional medications that they're doing, you know, taking as well. So all of this does add to the cost of uh, uh, you know, the, the cost that the family needs to incur. Um, Shrisha, from your perspective in the work you do, what are the additional, uh, you know, information that you would like to share on the gaps in terms of financial access? So um, I could talk from a more public health perspective. Um, as we see that it's estimated by 2030, India will be um, the world's largest population of patients with diabetes and uh, Chronic kidney condition in population-based studies is uh, mostly caused by diabetic nephropathy. And because of the challenges in access to care, over 50% of the patients are seen in their advanced stages of chronic kidney condition. And you can say that 2.2 lakh new patients add up for end-stage renal disease every year, mm. and which additionally accounts for 3.4 crore dialysis every year. So that's the high cost of dialysis care leads to financial catastrophe for practically all families with such patients. Mm -hmm. And the true burden of this end-stage renal disease in India is not known. Mm -hmm. This is some data which you get from the centers, dedicated care centers. And there is lack of universal access to renal replacement treatment um, because of the absence of a renal registry. We do have a chronic condition, uh, chronic kidney disease registry, but not an end stage uh, renal disease registry. So that's another because you cannot really account for the health outcomes here and track them or even understand the financial burden these patients have. Mm. Because if you have a registry, that also accounts for estimating some of these predictions in terms of what these registries can give and not only look at outcome, tracking their progression, and also how much is the burden of disease for them financially. Um, and even today, over 90% of the patients who require the renal um, replacement therapy in India die because of inability to afford the care. Mm. Um, and even in those who do not start um, renal replacement therapy, 60% stop because of financial reasons. So that's the data which is out there. And among patients who undergo kidney transplantation, unexpected complications have the potential to impose even more for the financial hardship because there is immense gap with the financial access to families and patients with kidney uh, disease. And not only financial solutions are available, but one which are available are not accessible to the most in need. So that kind of amplifies the problem even further. And I see that many of these solutions which are coming up with digital financial um, models with the financial lending 
और जीरो परसेंट इंटरेस्ट लोन फॉर पेशेंट्स और सेविंग्स फॉर पेशेंट्स इवन जनरल पब्लिक प्राइवेट बैंक्स पब्लिक सेक्टर यूनिट बैंक्स दे आर नॉट मेकिंग दैट मोर ऑफ लाइक अ हेल्थ सेविंग्स अकाउंट वेर यू कैन पे फॉर द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ द प्रीमियम ऑफ द कवरेज टू द इंटरेस्ट दे अर्न ऑन द मनी सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ देर इज अन लैक कवर um in a savings account and they earn a interest of like 3000 to 4000 over a year if that can be used for the premium of that patient for like a cover of 5 lakhs or 1 lakh or 2 lakhs that not only helps them save money for any additional expenses but also have a coverage for their insurance mm. where it doesn't really uh, pinch much in terms of paying separately for an insurance cover Right. but then you can at least keep aside certain money which you are earning a small amount of interest but that goes as a premium so that kind of digital literacy financial literacy is not much in the common public yeah. i think the biggest awareness with financial access even before that is that there is lack of financial literacy yeah. um financial access will happen once you know that how literate are you with the financial um and you can manage those or any kind of condition um uh, vasundra ji let me i think you've got a couple of slides so let me share that and if you can talk about uh you know what has been your experience uh, when you've recently done a study of uh, a sample of kidney patients Uh, so uh, it is like this for past 5 years uh, since kidney warriors foundation has been there we try to understand the needs of patients and uh, to address them the physical challenges or the medical challenges they have is something that we can only counsel them and uh, soften it with uh, kind words but finally it's the financial needs that really can make a difference in their life mm. so that we have been struggling to find a way to reach that goal and uh, we found the option is only available through an insurance because um, medicine costs are all determined by so many uh, levels of uh, pricing hmm. and it's very difficult to get uh, the same amount of discount across the states or uh, patients receiving their medicine at their doorstep because sometimes they need to go to the hospitals to collect it or go to a government uh, outlet where they can get it at a lower cost so there are a lot of challenges so we uh, are looking at the insurance very keenly and uh, what we found is of course the age and gender part will be there where the skew is more for the in favor of the men and um, but we found that 57 people 57% of the people didn't have any insurance but uh, surprisingly the out of pocket was like 79.6% and then we had to question them that uh, uh, what is happening why why is your insurance not working so we got to know that the government uh, yojanas and insurance does not cover cover many of these critical tests like tac tac level tests which is so important for the post transplant people and then the biopsies are another issue like some people pay for the biopsy some insurance companies pay for the biopsies but some do not pay and for the government uh, centers the biopsies are not paid and then there is a gap of uh, post uh, for the transplantees that is people who underwent a transplant under the government scheme are receiving only the cost of the transplant that happens during the surgery whatever is the cost that comes free but they have to spend a lot of money on the initial test and um, that is a lot of money because 1.5 lakhs can become a little more i've stated 1.5 lakhs as a minimum or an average cost but it could go up depending on uh, repeated tests that could uh, happen and stuff like that so finally the whole thing is that patients are little uneasy about the insurance schemes because there is a bottom line they need to know what is the small print there and uh, these are the problems that they are facing on the tests the laboratory tests and investigations so when you go to the dialysis part 
people going, patients going to the hospitals, uh, patients and the caregivers spending outside the, the caregivers traveling with them and they are spending outside the uh, dialysis center is not even considered as any cost. In the case of patients uh, getting uh, the facility under the government, they have to go very far to get the dialysis. Mm. And of course, since it's free, they don't mind doing that extra bit. But that is a reality. Peritoneal dialysis is free, but uh, because of the hygiene factors, many people in the smaller, uh, the rural area and the BPL categories do not uh, go for the peritoneal dialysis. Um, as far as the insurance is concerned for uh, dialysis, I heard that for hemodialysis it's available, but it's not there for hemodiafiltration, which is a better uh, procedure, a better dialysis according to them since the molecules are uh, better filtered. And for per peritoneal dialysis, one needs to be hospitalized to get the uh, uh, claim, to register the claim. We find that uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh has been very uh, kind and generous, and they're giving a pension to the BPL uh, of rupees 9,000 for dialysis patients and rupees 5,000 for post-transplant, which is not there in many of the other states. Maybe Haryana had uh, introduced one. I don't know how far it has been implemented. But we need to look at this across the country so that uh, you know, the BPL patients can at least get their free the free medicines on transplant and many other uh, things that are still, there is still a gap. When, right. when we look at the transplant costs, the immunosuppressants are paid for three years at MRP and the patients are saying, okay, can we get it at a special discounted rate so that we can get the same facility for the whole year? Because now with the amount of uh, the slab that they get is rupees 50,000 for six months. And that gets uh, uh, used in three months because of the MRP rates. So these are the problems and issues that we have. And we just need uh, this concern to be escalated to the authorities, to the government, to the insurance companies. Because we feel that the middle class is sudden, is always sidelined and they don't seem to get any relief in any part of the system, the medical healthcare system. Right. So insurance could be a good uh, way of opening that benefit for them because ultimately it's uh, with the, the life of a, a person on dialysis or transplant. It's not only the person who's affected, the family has spent a lot of money, made lots of sacrifice, sold their assets and uh, properties to keep one member happy and surviving. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of um, sacrifice and uh, maybe a benefit from the insurance, which means that uh, there is some hap is a happy thought that, okay, I'm not spending too much. I'm getting some relief. I'm being recognized as an important uh, person in the society. That really makes a lot of difference. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Asuraji. Um, Dr. Gulati, you know, we, we looked at some of this data, right? It talks of how tests are not covered, uh, post-transplant uh, medications are not covered, um, even different forms of dialysis coverage is uh, not a, uh, you know, there's no parity in that. So what is the in impact on the health outcomes of a patient when optimal treatment is not covered by, and we also heard, I think, from a few patients where um, they, I think in certain states, they limit the uh, dialysis to eight a month uh, as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, there are those aspects as well. So what is the outcome, impact on health outcomes of a patient uh, when optimal treatment is not covered? So I think this creates a situation of double whammy. One, the patients are coming to us late. Mm. Second, when they see that the costs are escalating, uh, so they try to cut corners. Mm. You know, they will not come for regular follow-up, they will not do these investigations and that adds to the poorer outcomes of chronic kidney disease and also brings a bad name 
to the disease uh, you know uh, but uh, in the end yes uh, since if you if, uh, there's no point in talking about treatment which a patient cannot afford i may have, you may have the best of treatments available but at the end, in the end if the patient cannot afford it's just it, the penetration is not there the outcome have to be poor but to add to this uh, we, we have been looking at you know the status of alternative therapy so education is also equally important for these mm. people mm. And over the last six months, I've just been looking at alternative therapies. And it's surprising that uh, even in a city like Delhi, 40% of the patients who came to me before they opted for, an, a, I would say, a scientifically validated treatment, mm. had spent lots of money on unscientific and unvalidated treatments. I think this is another aspect which we cannot push under the carpet I, in the end. Uh, if the patients are, that's why the the if you see the uh, motto for World Kidney Day this year was uh, bridging the knowledge gap. So right. the, what we have debated is that a lot of treatments have become available mm. over the last few years, but in the end, if this tr treatment is not being able to you know be delivered to the patient, it's not uh, there, and so the, creating greater awareness among the patients about the scientific validated therapies is also equally important. And at the same time, as we have been talking about insurance, so opting for insurance, uh, we all know, I mean, at the end of the day, insurance companies are business houses and a business house is there, not there for charity. Let's be very clear about it. They are out, they are there to run a business. So that is why that the moment these, a patient is diagnosed with chronic kidney disease, most of them, are excluded from health insurance. Right. Nobody is going to offer health insurance to a patient of chronic kidney disease. So we have to work with the companies, with the government, that the access to health insurance should be there. And at the same time, the people need to be aware that they need to opt for health insurance when they're healthy enough so that it's easier for them to get the insurance at a very low cost. So tomorrow, if they require the services of health insurance they are available right right and uh, the uh, the other issue with the health insurance i think as was very aptly pointed out by vasundra ji is that almost uh, no insurance policy is covering uh, outpatient um, treatment investigations which most of your early stages of chronic kidney disease uh, you know would have Correct. Uh, even very important test like biopsy is not covered by so we have patients coming to me who are insured and the moment we tell them about a biopsy and the biopsy I can tell you the cost for a biopsy in any corporate sector hospital is highly subsidized so it's but still works out to be about 30 35 thousand because it involves one day's admission a, you know uh, an ultrasound a room charge processing for the, uh, the the procedure part and then processing the tissue that is taken so if you see it is a highly subsidized, but and despite the fact that when we even when we certify that this is a test which can only be done after admission, mm. there is a refusal from the insurance companies saying that the tests are not covered in your insurance. And even so if they are hospitalized, it's not covered, is it? No, they are, they are denied because they say that you are being admitted for a test, and somehow there is this clause there in uh, most insurance policies that uh, your tests will not be covered. So this is another aspect. I think uh, the data is excellent. Uh, I must compliment uh, Vasudraji and the Kidney Warriors Foundation for collecting this data. I think what we need to do is now work on this data. Uh, uh, first of all, try to put it in print. Anything that's the, there in print will be respected by the government by the NGOs, by the insurance companies. So I think um, as the president of the Indian Society of Nephrology, this time we are planning a patient advocacy group. And I look forward to working closely with the Kidney Warriors Foundation to try to improve. This is a big gap. And I said that, uh, you know, as long we could be getting the best of the treatments available and we could be telling that, look, this is how we can slow down kidney disease and this is how the outcomes of transplant can be improved but the at the if this uh, treatment is not translated into actual availability to the patient if the penetrance is not there then that treatment is useless 
Correct. Correct. No, I, I think that is really important. And, you know, if, if with the support of uh, uh, the Indian Society of Nephrology, I'm sure we can even expand the, you know, the number of respondents and reach a wider network as well. Um, uh, Vasanuraji, in your experience, I know you've summarized the challenges of access, but what has been the experience of members when uh, they are not able to cover uh, you know, all of the treatments and uh, and investigations that are needed? What is the effect of that on the patient and the family? So, um, uh, see, that's why we are always constantly taking up um, topics like uh, biopsies and, uh, uh, you know, doing the genetic testing to make the patients understand why these are very important, critically important. To be not doing a, to avoid a biopsy because it's a cost, uh, it is something like that. That doesn't work out at all. Mm. In Mumbai, there is there are these trust centers where you get biopsies done at a lower cost, so people go and get it done there. So that is how they uh, try to manage. Many of them are also going to the KEM hospital, government hospitals, to uh, get some uh, you know get under relief. BPL, right. uh, government schemes so that these biopsies can happen. So actually we are pushing them to go and get into the government schemes because there's no other option. Even for transplant, for everything, dialysis, all the costs are so high. So we just say, okay, you want money? Okay, now what you do is go and get yourself registered under the BPL category. It means a little work, but running around, but it'll help you in the long run. So mm. we keep pushing them that way. But for biopsies, these small trust centers which offer discounts, that works out for them. But this, I can't talk about the other states. You see, I don't know what's happening there. You're right. So we need to kind of collate more data from oh, all yeah. the states as well, or at least a you know, wider representation of states. Yes, that people talk more in some states. Mm. In some cities, people are talking more. In some cities, in uh, if you go to the cultural things are there, you know, when you go to some other state, some other city, the way the people behavior is very different. They don't right. want to talk about these things. So they're just very shut about it. Hmm. You have to keep asking them these questions that what do you do without insurance? How do you manage? So yeah. things happen. Right. Thank you. Uh, so... I guess the, the last bit is, you know, what is the way forward, right? Uh, what should we be doing? Um, how can we advocate together? Who we who do we need to bring together to make these changes happen? Uh, Sirisha, I'll start with you. Sure. So um, in terms of what we can do is, I think we'll have to have the healthcare ecosystem approach here, wherein we not only look at the patient side, we need to also look at the challenges from the provider side and the health uh, system as a whole. Mm. Because there are several aspects which we see that um, and the private sector, which comes with various instruments for patients um, irrespective of what disease area they're working on. Mm. Um, as a social responsibility of a citizen or even to change the behavior towards health is something which will happen over time or if there is an episode in the family or your extended family, you get to understand why is it important or why it means so much to me. Mm. But as a general public, what are the things the health the system or the government is doing in terms of bringing awareness among people for their general well-being? There are certain aspects which they focus, which is more mandatory. But as NCDs are becoming more pressing need of the hour, I think um, as a government, they are doing their bit. But from the stakeholders perspective of a patient group or the institutions or academic institution, research institutions, they also have to put out these quantifiable numbers out there for making and magnifying and ensuring what is the real picture today. I think that role is to be there. Because especially when people don't understand the intensity of a problem, it becomes very difficult to explain them. Unless you are in trouble, right. then only it becomes like, okay, this is my world now and I don't know what to do about it. But from an outsider's perspective, if I know that my father has a CKD, 
or some extended family member i know a bit about it but it yeah. happens in the family you know more about it but shouldn't i know this about it even not having been there what are the best ways of putting that education out there awareness about that and i think patient groups can be a biggest channel here to do that job by collaborating with the private entities and the government to bring that awareness because they know the real pain points the story behind the patient um are there communities of practice for kidney disease uh, patients um where they can share and talk about their day to day challenges the families could interact understanding what is the support system you have uh what are like pasundra ji was just telling about i have this policy do you want to look at it and then it's kind of a word of mouth yeah. is there a formal platform where we can bring these pkd patients together and have like a common circle of um learning and sharing um that needs to happen and i think it's the objective has to be clear whether we want to bring this awareness to health literacy initiatives or are we trying to um make some changes in the health policy by engaging with them and shaping the policy for bringing uh, changes in the insurance schemes for ncds through the yeah. government and the third is the private sector how can i engage with the private sector to tell them the the severity of this problem and what are the main problem areas which a patient will face during this treatment or disease management mm. um digital lending and saving solutions have to come out um how do you interact because now it's more tech enabled platform many of the people have smartphones and people have access to a lot of applications can we collaborate with a digital app company or a mobile application company who can work on devising an intervention which talks about ckd creates that awareness around the problem and also magnifies this with making more financially accountable in terms of if i have stage 1 i will have to spend x amount of money in the next 5 years if i if i have stage 2 this is what i need so at least i'm prepared i know that what i need to do in terms of saving that amount and in terms of the stakeholders i think the the biggest responsibility as a citizen would be to more of putting out to these different channels academia research government private sector and then the biggest one is the patient group because they they have the knowledge they know the experience the patient experiences with them and if those are articulated well i think we know what we exactly need and bringing affordable and accessible healthcare for them right thank you so let's look at uh, you know we we've, we've talked of what is the what is it you know uh, what are the various components of optimal treatment we've talked of the gaps in financial access we've talked of the impact on the health outcomes um, not just on the patient but also the family so what is it that we can do together uh, you know to uh, change the scenario to advocate for greater financial access both from insurers as well as maybe a uh, you know more relief or more coverage from the government given the commitment towards universal health coverage uh, and you know this week is universal health coverage day as well so you know what is it that i know dr kulati you said that uh, you know uh, you know kind of uh, isn and uh, kidney warriors foundation can work together on this and as patients engage we are happy to support as well what would you have in mind and you know what can be done to move the needle on this we'll start with you dr kulati so i think uh, as i said uh, that uh, this is we are a democratic country democracy is a government of the people by the people for the people mm. in the end yeah, the the advocacy needs to be there the government has a lot on its plate and i think there is no doubt that for the government for a people uh, for a country with more than 800 billion people the primary the priority is primary health care but you know india is making progress the gdp is increasing and there are various models uh, i am aware that a lot of south american countries with similar or even lower gdp chronic kidney disease there is a national program um so it is covered by the by the government uh, because of uh, the the enormous impact it has on uh, the productivity of 
the uh, people of the country. Hmm. Um, chronic kidney disease is one disease where, you know, if you transplant a, a dialysis patient, we are making him a useful and productive member of the society. Correct. From a person who's dependent, you know, on government support, on family support, to a it, you, you can kidney transplant can completely transform this patient into a person who supports the family. We have several examples there. And I think this is what the government needs to realize. If I look at the government programs also so far, even in Telangana, the focus has been a lot more on dialysis. And mm. when I talk to my colleagues, there's a dialysis program. There Even there is, I think, the Prime Minister's National Dialysis Correct. Program is there. But there is very little to support a kidney transplant. Right. And, um, even in a lot of, uh, we have uh, the central government health scheme, you know, which funds dialysis. Uh, so anything which comes free, it, you know, when I talk to these patients who are on dialysis, a lot of them refuse to go in for transplant, predominantly because one, A, the dialysis is funded. Right. So they are going to get it for free. Well, they are getting suboptimal. They are, that also, you know, as you, it is eight dialysis per week. It's not three mm. times per week, eight dialysis per month. So it's not 12 per month. But at least they get coming into the hospital, getting, and if there's a complication, they get admitted. It's all taken care of. Right. For a kidney transplant, they will require a donor from the family, which mm. requires, a, although the transplant is also, you know, being supported, but the very fact that the dialysis is free, it becomes a default option. Right. So the government right. needs to be proactively thinking about the cost of that. Ultimately, somebody is paying for it and the society ends up paying for it. So the priority for the government, for the society has to be to push these patients to a kidney transplant. How do you go about it? I think we should define that, okay, this much amount of dialysis will be free and by the end of this, we do expect that you should go in for a kidney transplant unless you are not fit for it. Mm -hmm. So if there is a caveat and there is a certificate from a doctor that you are unfit, you would be given free dialysis. But beyond that, no dialysis is going to be free. On the other hand, the money that is saved here should be utilized to fund lifelong immunosuppression, which again, as was brought out by the survey, is not being done at all. Right. So, but then, the, as I said, that the government is not aware and you don't have nephrologists sitting in the health ministry. And um, even if we might go to them at the ISN, um, you know, it may not make an impact because they may say that you are trying to promote yourself or the society. We are a quote unquote, con they could say that is a con. So that, that's where the patient advocacy comes in. That's where there's a joint initiative with the ISN um, and the uh, say Kidney Warriors Foundation telling the government that this is how the economics works. Right. So, right. so that's where I see and as, as I said again that uh, I look forward to working together. Uh, the numbers are important. It is a team effort always. It's a team that wins, not a person. The idea may be there, um, but unless and until we get together and work collectively, uh, we, we won't achieve our goal. Because the, the task at hand is very big. And okay. that's why we need a lot more people, a lot more ideas as to how to go about it. Obviously, we these are two, we need some public health experts as to analyze it and but first right. and foremost the literature because when, when we go to the government these surveys and all unless and until they are published mm. so we have to publish them in scientific literature and tell them that look this is Indian data this is western data and this is how the the government will save money actually and this is one language I'm sure everyone understands correct yeah. and right. this is uh, that's the way forward as I see that right Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gulati. Uh, Vasanara ji, any thoughts from your side as to what, you know, what Kidney Warriors Foundation would like to do or what you would want to, what you envisage as the way forward? Uh, Kidney Warriors Foundation is now uh, going in for CSR help. So we've made a, a pilot model for insurance where we are asking for corporates to help and pitch in. If we do this as a model and present it to the government, then maybe the government can take it up and implement it on a, on a larger scale because we are taking a sample of 100 people. We can't afford to do more than that. 
But if that happens, then we have got something, a story to talk about. So uh, maybe uh, sometime in 2023, some news we can get on this. But I'm really keen on seeing this pilot go through because otherwise uh, I don't see, I need, I see that this has to be a public private partnership. Otherwise it's going to be difficult. And in this uh, project, we are going to get the patients to pay a premium and then take back some money. So the feeling that I received rupees X amount and I paid an X amount, which is smaller than the bigger, the bigger X amount, double X amount, is a very, very positive feeling for patients and their families. Right. Just feel they live without any dignity because they've just sold everything. And what they have is just a smile on their face as if to show that a world that they are happy. But I can I can really vouch that none of them are uh, feeling very happy uh, with the type of life that they are leading. And the, pair, the families are all struggling. So I think that's my final take on this. Right. And we will take it forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Gulati and Vasundra ji. Um, I think I'll just, I, I think, you know, each of the panelists has spoken quite well, uh, as, you know, Surisha talked of in her session. We definitely need more innovative and inclusive solutions, as Dr. Gulati said, that we need to find ways to, create those models, uh, as you know, Vasanaraji said, they're trying out some pilot, but we also need to put together the models which will make it, uh, it, it you know, make it crystal clear on the options available and what, uh, you know, what the government needs to prioritize as well. Uh, and we also need to, you know, make sure that whatever solutions we come up with treat the person, the patient, and the family with dignity, right? So, you know, universal healthcare is not just a demand, it's a right. And I think it's important to remember that that the dignity of the person should never be compromised. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, Vasnuraji, for, uh, you know, kind of initiating this project and for, uh, we hope that we can make a difference to advocate for better financial access. And because ultimately financial access is not just about finances, it affects mental health, it affects, uh, uh, you know, not just that person, but the rest of the family. So, and we want everybody to feel productive, to feel uh, a sense of belonging as well in our society. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And I must compliment uh, Vasundraji and Kidney Warriors Foundation for you know, taking up this issue, uh, which I'm sure is going to, in years to come, is going to be a, a, a landmark project. Uh, look forward to working. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Gulati, I'm really looking forward to working with you this year. Sure. On patient advocacy mm -hmm. at all levels and uh, maybe even to write that article that you just mentioned. Oh, definitely. I think we should. That's the first priority to get it in print so that, you know, uh, we are able to interact with the this is the policy makers there. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let me stop the recording. Yep. Yeah. Thanks.